Hey guys, so today I'm going to show you how to deal with chemical waste. Well, a particular kind of chemical waste. Um, this, these are filters that I used for growing copper crystals. What I would do is I would melt down a bar of copper wire or copper pipe, just source a large chunk of copper, melt it down into a bar, and then electroplate it into crystals. Um, metals that are not copper will inevitably fall out of solution when you're doing so. Um, as you can see, there's still a lot of copper sulfate crusted all along these filters. So, I, it's just simply come time to where this can is full of filters and ready for me to start processing. So I'm going to show you guys how to do so. First thing we need to go ahead and do is get rid of the copper sulfate that is still on here because it's very water soluble. Um, it will be very easy to remove it. And as you can see, if you look inside these filters, um, there is a powder in there. It's metal. However, anybody who has worked a lot with electroplating copper knows that that is not copper that's sitting in there. It is probably a whole mixture of things such as lead, tin, gold, silver, just whatever else is left in copper after it's refined at the factory and turned into wire. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this jar. And yes, I do use crappy recycled jars for things like this. I have plenty of beakers. I could do this in a beaker if I wanted. However, um, I've had enough beakers stained with copper and stained with various other things that for projects like this it's better to just use a glass jar and then uh, once you start getting things down a bit more refined then you can switch to beakers. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stuff this full of these filters. Now I've been keeping these filters for a very long time, for years. Uh, and I've just been sticking them in here. Let's see, this one is really heavy. As you can see, that looks like primarily copper in there. Which I expect, honestly, to the majority of this to be copper. Um, but we're going to go ahead... There's a lot of s copper sulfate on that one. We're going to go ahead and dissolve all of the copper sulfate off of these filters and then I'm going to wash them, and then we're going to have a sediment down at the bottom. Um, I've got distilled water here. This is not going to be what I use, though. This is what I'll be spraying off the filters with. This is distilled water. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put the phone down for a minute and fill this with a bit of water so it'll start dissolving this copper sulfate, and then uh, pick it back up and uh, continue on. I am back. So I decided to abandon this jar. Um, it was getting just a little, I don't know, I didn't like having to try to pull it out of there. So I've got a couple plastic trays here. I got this filled up with hot distilled water. And then this is going to be where the filters are dumped. So we're going to go ahead and start soaking these filters in here. And as you can see, I did end up putting some gloves on. I should have had them on in the beginning, but. I didn't think about it when I started shooting the video. But we're going to go ahead and get all of these soaking. There's quite a few of them in here. Like I said, I've been making these crystals for a couple years, and I've just thrown all the filters in this can. And I don't expect any of the powder, this brown stuff, uh, I don't expect any of that to dissolve. Or if it does, it's going to be very small quantities. Uh, primarily, this is to get all the actual copper sulfate off, like you see here. This, this water is pretty warm, so it shouldn't take too long for it to start dissolving this copper sulfate. I may need to get some more in here. Oh, 
taken. Don't be blessed. Okay. And we have what's left in this jar. As you can see, it's already dissolved the copper sulfate off these filters. But we'll go ahead and add it all in here. Now, I'm not at all sure what metals I'm going to get out of this. Um, primarily copper. I have no doubt about that. But beyond that, you know, copper isn't pure. Or at least not copper wire, you know, copper pipe. Um, sometimes it's mixed with a little bit of gold or silver to prevent corrosion. Oftentimes you'll get a little bit of lead and tin on it due to soldering. Or if it's on the wires, you know, you'll get solder on the wires. But we are going to go ahead and uh, let this soak. Let all the copper sulfate start to dissolve. And then uh, we'll pull out each filter individually and spray it with that spray bottle to get as much off of it as I can. And then I'll put the filters into here. Uh, I'll let this sit for about 20-30 minutes and then I will come back to it. Hey guys, so it is the next day. I let these sit overnight. Anything that's soluble should pretty much be dissolved in here. Um, now what I'm going to do with these next, I'm going to go ahead and push these all back and then I'm going to take these, open them up, slosh them around in this liquid to try to get as much of the sediment out as possible. This is really hard to do with one hand. Um, and then I'm going to spray them with distilled water, try to wash off as much as possible. And then uh, I'll put the filters into this next bin here. Um, I am like, like I said before, I have no idea what metals are left in here. Um, I could pretty much guarantee a good chunk of it's copper because, like I said, I was growing copper crystals with this. But you know, any of the impurities and everything would have fell out. Uh, so I expect a lot of tin, uh, maybe some lead, some zinc, um, and once again, hopefully a bit of copper and gold. Uh, or silver and gold, I'm sorry. But because I only have one hand, I'm not going to be able to do this on video. But like I said, what I'm going to do with each one of these is I'm going to slosh them around, rinse them off, throw them in here. Um, some of these have a lot of stuff in the middle of them. Yeah, I can't really open these up with one hand. Um, but I will go ahead and start getting this done, and I will pick up the camera again. Uh, speaking of, I actually, this particular project had got me to finally order a tripod for my camera. So while it's being shipped to me, I don't have it now. Uh, I will in the future, so I'll be able to actually do more of the process on film. Uh, let me go ahead and get this done, and I will pick the camera back okay. up. So I had finished rinsing these filters off. Uh, there's the pile right there. As you can see, they're not perfectly rinsed. You're not going to get these filters completely clean. As you can see, some of them are really bad. Um, you can tell there's still, looks like some copper oxide and maybe some carbonates. Uh, this is non, you know, pretty much the stuff that is non-soluble in water. Um, and sometimes that really fine particulate you get whenever you're electroplating and growing crystals and whatnot. It is barely trapped by the coffee filter, and so getting it out of the coffee filter once it, once it is trapped in there is kind of kind of a pain. But I got most of them pretty well cleaned. So what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to set these out to dry. Now once they're dry, I will incinerate them, and then we can get at everything else that's left on this. Um, that way we're not throwing anything that could be dangerous away and getting it into the waste or the groundwater or anything like that. Now this is everything that's left over. This is primarily the, the dissolved, what, what's actually in solution at the moment is uh, copper sulfate. They're the uh, crystals that, or the stuff I didn't rinse properly off these filters. Now as you can see, the sediment at the bottom is what looks like primarily copper. It's, yeah, I mean, it's, it looks like a whole mix of stuff. Hmm, I hope that, hope it's all copper. That looks more like almost mercury, this orange here. But uh, that's the point, you know, if you have 
dangerous chemicals or if you're reclaiming gold or doing any of that, you need to be also be responsible enough to clean up the waste. So what's going to happen is I'm going to put this in a beaker um, because once again, I don't have the tripod, I cannot do that with only one hand. So I'm going to go ahead and pour this into a beaker and set this out to dry and then we'll start filtering this. Okay. So I managed to decant this off uh, as best as I can and uh, that is what's left at the bottom. As you can see, it's got a lot of different colors in there, but it looks to be primarily copper. Um, the rest of it, this is the biggest container I could find that I had around here that was clear that would hold all this. But as you can see, it's starting to settle out, but it's a long way away from being that, ni that nice uh, crystal clear light blue that copper sulfate is known for. So I'm going to filter it off. I'm going to use a coffee filter. But anyone who has tried to filter anything that has such a small precipitate like this knows that a coffee filter just isn't going to cut it. So a little trick that you can do is use a couple cotton balls in your filter. You poke them down in there, nice and tight. Make sure that you know they're not just floating around in there. And then you place your coffee filter in. And this actually does a couple things. It will catch any of the finer particulate that actually makes its way through, and it stops your coffee filter from falling out in the center. Just give a couple sprays to the inside of the filter so it sticks. If you don't spray it, whenever you go to start pouring it in, uh, the coffee filter will fold in on itself. It'll just give you all kinds of problems. So let's go ahead and pour this through. Now this is going to take a really long time to filter, so this is going to, there's going to be a lot of cuts in this. It's going to take it a second, but as you can see, it is a nice light blue. Come on, focus. Wow. And that's more the color that we're looking for rather than that. But as you can see, this is going to take a minute. Um, I will keep coming back out here and pouring this through and uh, I might take a couple more videos part of the way through the process but then uh, I will see you again whenever this is done. Okay, now that I've gotten about 375 milliliters in there you can see the difference that a couple of cotton balls can make when you're trying to filter it. Once this is done this will be ready to uh, crystallize and uh, I, I'll probably purify it a bit more during the crystallization where uh, you essentially just dry it out and when you still have a few milliliters of liquid left you pour that liquid off um, and then it should be pure enough that I can start using it again to grow more crystals uh, I'll just add it into the rest um, but as you can see we've still got a bit more filtering to go this was about uh, five minutes or so of filtering so I've got a little bit longer to go Okay, so I'm reaching close to the top of this, this Erla Meyer flask here, um, and before, I was going to go dump it in my crystallizing tray, but before I do, I wanted to show you something as well. Um, even with a couple filters up in here, this is not as clear as it should be. If you've ever worked with copper sulfate, I mean, it should be like clear blue glass. And sure, you can see my fingers a little bit back there, and you can kind of see the table underneath through the corner here, but... Overall, it's still got a, a lot of little particulate uh, suspended in it. Uh, it's nowhere near as bad as this. Um, but you'll find that even the best filters is going to have troubles with this. So what you want to do in order to get this out is to crystallize it. Now sure, that adds a lot of extra time. And if it doesn't need to be absolutely pure, like for instance, if you were going to use this to put in your septic system to kill out the roots that are in there, uh, it doesn't really have to be pure at that point, but um, I am purifying copper through it, so I want it to be as pure as I can get. Um, so what you're going to, like I said, what you want to do is crystallize this out, it's get all the water out, you can even boil it, um, but what that will do is that will clump up all the really fine particles and two bigger particles that can be then filtered out. Um, I'm going to go ahead and dump this and continue on with filtering this through, and then we will work on that and whatever here is at the bottom. So this is done draining now are filtering through and there is the mud that it filtered out. And I'm just going to add that to this here. 
Um, what I'm going to go ahead and do is scrape and wash all of that into here. Spray it to clean it out into here. And then I'll put the filter and the cotton balls into here as well. And then we will start, I guess, an acid treatment first to start cleaning some of this up. Okay, so I have that mud put into here. There's a bit of water that I use the spray bottle wash to wash it in. Um, I'm adding in the filter now. I want you to see how much material this cotton actually catches. As you can see, quite a bit. So, I'm going to take that out. Set it in there. Down. Okay, so that should be most of everything. Now, I did rinse quite a bit, and there's still a bit of copper sulfate in there. As you can see, it's still a slight blue, um, but that's okay. Um, I have about 175 milliliters of hydrochloric acid. Come on, focus. And uh, we're going to pour a little bit in and see if there's a reaction. This should remove any of the more reactive metals like zinc or tin. Um, and it should be left with some of the more noble metals in here. Because after all, I mean, what we're going after is gold and silver and platinum. So we will see if there's a bit of a reaction, which there should be, I fully expect there to be. You can see it bubbling around in there. Okay, I will go ahead and add the rest of this. And that green you see is going to be the uh, copper oxides. You're going to get a lot of copper chloride in this as well. And then I'm going to go ahead and let this go for a little while, let it react, stir it up. And then uh, we will filter this off. And then uh, I may add a little bit more, depending on uh, if it needs it. Then we're going to do an a, uh, acid peroxide bath. And that should get rid of things like copper. And then what we'll have left, or in theory what we should have left, is the gold and silver and platinum. Uh, the platinum I won't be able to melt in my furnace, but we can definitely melt down the gold and silver. Um, this, the, any silver in here... Especially if it's like silver oxide, should be getting or should be reacting right now to silver chloride. But silver chloride does not really dissolve in water, so it should fall out and stay with the gold. In theory, um, that may not be the case, but we will see. So this is done reacting now. Um, I went ahead and fished out the coffee filter and the cotton and rinsed them several, several times. Um, pouring all the drain back in here. With, I rinsed it several times with water. Um, now, the next thing I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to filter this and uh, then I'm going to set it aside because if you notice, I have a batch of almost the same stuff right here, except this is all going for gold. Uh, you can see a SIM card floating up top there. Um, its primary ingredient is going to be copper chloride in both of these, uh, but they're pretty much sourced from the same same material essentially it's all coming from electronics all my copper a lot of my gold um or at least this kind of gold so whenever i go to um take care of the waste from this from this particular step i'm going to do these two together and that's going to be a whole separate video um but if you look you'd see that there's still stuff at the bottom here that didn't get dissolved so we're going to go ahead and filter this off and see what we have left now, I went ahead and cleaned the Sirlemeyer flask and the funnel. 
And I'm going to use the, I should not look through the camera while I'm doing this. I'm gonna use the same cotton that I rinsed out of here. Um, pretty much everything should be rinsed out of it. We're gonna stuff that down in there. And we're going to grab this other piece here. And the reason for this is because um, what was filtered through this is in here. And I'm just filtering that back through. Okay. So we'll put this filter in. And we're going to spray the sides. Make sure it sticks. Okay. So before I go any further, I'm going to go ahead and get some gloves on. Um, I'm not going to be able to, well, I don't feel comfortable pouring this uh, while holding a camera. So I'm going to go ahead and filter this through. I should be able to pretty much put this whole thing into the funnel and then pick the camera back up and uh, I will see you then. Okay, so I filtered off that hydrochloric acid bath. Uh, and this is the mud that's left over. You can see there's a fair bit of copper and some other things in here. And then this is the mud left over in the filter. Uh, it's a little wet still because I was doing some extra rinses to wash any extra copper chlorides out and whatever else is in there. Um, and I know I could have done this last step, the hydrochloric acid bath with this acid peroxide bath. Uh, I could have done all that in one step and essentially ended up with the same stuff. And in fact, I'm gonna take the stuff that I get from this and mix it all in with this, uh, the refuse from it and deal with it all at once. Um, but I wanted to see how much material I would have left over after just a hydrochloric acid bath. Um, so to do the acid peroxide, we got about 75 milliliters of hydrochloric acid and some 3% hydrogen peroxide. Now this is probably gonna turn green or a slight hue of a green. Yeah, because there's still some oxides and stuff in there from the copper. I actually filtered this off last night, so it sat out all night and that's why there would be oxides. But there's not going to be a whole lot of a reaction. You can see it's cleaning the copper. And then we're just going to add a bit of peroxide. And you'll see the reaction pretty much immediately. Now, this reaction is rather slow. I'm not entirely sure how long this is going to take, but I can see this easily taking a day or two at least. Um, I will go ahead and come up and check on this and uh, take some video and I'll tell you how much time has lapsed. Uh, once this is done draining, I'm going to go ahead, the filter, I'm going to go ahead and drop it in here as well. And then uh, whatever I get out of this will be torched up. Hopefully it'll be noble metals at that point. And so uh, I'll just torch it down and deal, you know, it'll be, I guess, like a high grade noble metal, gold, silver. Um, and I will deal with it at the same time I get the gold and everything out of that. Which will be a whole separate video, but it should be the one right after this one. Um, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and let this sit. And uh, I will come back to it and take some pictures. So, it is the next day. And uh, this is pretty much done reacting. Um, as you can see, there's still a decent amount of mud at the bottom. That's exactly what we're looking for. So, in theory... There shouldn't be any copper left in this. Whatever is left should be other metals. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and filter this off. I already had dug out the filter and the cotton. And once again, put them in here. I haven't rinsed it yet. As you can see, there, uh, there's still a bit of copper chloride in there. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and filter this off and then we'll see what we get. That's, this should be what we're looking for at the bottom. Okay, so I got that mud washed out and into a beaker, if I can get it to focus. Come on. There it goes. Um, it looks like there's still a tiny bit of copper in there. I see some gold flecks, but the ma grand, grand majority of what's left in here is white metal, um, as well as this um, grayish precipitate. Now, whenever I was watching the um, acid peroxide mixture 
uh, eat through the copper in this dish, I was watching that precipitate fall out. Um, and so that's a good indicator that it's probably silver, this mud. Uh, because, well, for a couple reasons, uh, silver chloride is not really soluble, so it's going to fall. It's, it's going to fall right out of solution. Um, and then on top of it, you're going to have the copper that's dissolving, cementing the silver out. So um, you're going to get a decent little mixture of uh, silver oxides and silver chlorides. But as soon as this is done draining, as you can see, it's still going. There's a decent bit of mud in there. There's a decent bit in here. As soon as that's done, uh, we will go ahead and dry it out and torch it down. Uh, hopefully get a bit of silver out of it. And like I said, I see a bit of gold in there, like little tiny, tiny flakes. Uh, but I will process that out whenever I process the gold from here. Um, the grand majority of base metals should be removed. Uh, and I mean, if they're not, it's not hard to remove them. Um, this is still draining a little bit. I will go ahead and torch the filter with the uh, powder on it. Uh, it just makes it easier. The carbon will burn right off, turn into CO2. And if you do have any other base metals, I mean, the carbon will only help to reduce them back to metal form. So I will go ahead and burn that with it. Um, I will go ahead and pick the camera back up as soon as I can load this into a crucible and start torching it down. So I have the filter and cotton pulled out of there and I'm drying it out right now. I got it inside the crucible and I'm using uh, a heat gun. Uh, it shouldn't take too long. Uh, this thing gets pretty hot. But as soon as it is dry, I will go ahead and torch down this filter and the cotton balls that are inside of it. Uh, this has got all that, what I believe is silver mud. Um, you can see there's a bit of green on there as it's drying out. That means I didn't rinse it perfectly. Which means there's going to be a small bit of copper contaminant. Um, in the end, but like I said, I expected I expected there to be a little bit of copper in there anyway. This did, after all, come from nothing but copper wire and copper pipe. Um, once this is dry, like I said, I will go ahead and torch it down, and then I will add the rest of this mud. It's still wet. Uh, it'll get dried out in the same way as well. Uh, and then hopefully I will get a nugget um, and uh, show you guys what exactly I recovered from, from the copper. So I've got everything in here. I got the uh, filter and the cotton burned down. Um, and then all of the mud and everything from here is put into here now. Um, now it's time to go ahead and add some flux. This is gonna be borax. Uh, this is the bulk of the flux itself. And then we are going to add sodium carbonate. And this thins out the flux. Uh, if you've ever worked with borax, you'll know that it turns into a really thick molasses type uh, flux. And uh, added so adding sodium carbonate turns it more into like, say, you know, the chocolate syrup. Just it thins it out a little bit. We're going to go ahead and hit it with some map gas and see how it does. Can't really tell how well the camera's picking it up.
Okay. Let's stop this for a second. You can see how much is in there. Um, this is going to take a while to actually melt down. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the camera. That way I can actually focus on melting this down. And then uh, I'm going to get a just a, like a soup can or something full of water so I can dump this in once it's melted. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and fire this down and then pick the camera back up as soon as I can pour the nugget. Okay, so I finished torching this thing down. And this is what I got. Um, I haven't waited or anything yet because it's... I'm going to process it down further. Um, I expect it to be primarily silver. Silver, copper, and gold. Um, as you can see, there's it's got that... If it'll focus. It's got that red copper color. Um, but it's much, much lighter than that as well. Uh, so what I will end up doing with this is I will process it down further for the copper, gold, and silver that's in it. Um, and I will do this whenever I do the gold out of this. And this is probably going to be my next video is processing the gold out of here. And then dealing with the waste. Uh, that's probably going to be a video all in its own because it's got a lot of steps in it. Um, you can see. This is almost, and this has actually been sitting for a couple weeks now. I don't know why this thing has such trouble focusing. Um, but you can see the, the bits of gold floating around in there. Uh, so I will see you next time whenever we are processing the gold out of here and then again whenever we deal with the waste from chemically recycling electronics.